At 7.15 p.m. on February 7, 2008, a series of violent sugar dust explosions devastated the Imperial Sugar Refinery in Port Wentworth, Georgia, just outside Savannah. Explosions raced through the buildings, fueled by accumulations of combustible sugar dust and sugar that had spilled from equipment. Thick concrete floors heaved up and brick walls were blown into stairwells and work areas, blocking many exit routes. Fires spread rapidly. Eight workers died at the scene. Six more died later at a regional burn center. Dozens of others were injured. The plant's massive sugar packing buildings were a total loss. The accident at Imperial Sugar was the deadliest industrial dust explosion in the United States in decades. It highlights the extremely serious nature of combustible dust hazards. There were significant accumulations of sugar dust and spilled granulated sugar on surfaces throughout this facility. Conditions were set for a catastrophic accident. Imperial Sugar's sprawling Port Wentworth complex began operations in 1917 and grew to become one of the largest sugar refining and packaging facilities in the U.S. Granulated sugar from the refinery was stored in three 100-foot-tall silos and then conveyed into packing buildings where it was packaged for distribution. Granulated sugar was also converted into specialty products such as brown sugar and powdered sugar. Sugar was transported by a complex system of bucket elevators screw conveyors, and conveyor belts. During this process, sugar spilled onto floors throughout the work area. In places, the spilled sugar was many inches deep. This sugar also contained fine particles, which became airborne. In addition, hammer mills were used to crush the granulated sugar into powdered sugar, creating even more dust. The machines were connected to a dust collection system, but it was undersized and in disrepair. And it was not connected to the bucket elevators and conveyors. Significant amounts of sugar dust escaped into the work areas. Workers routinely used compressed air to clean packaging machines, further dispersing sugar dust throughout the buildings. Over time, Large amounts of dust accumulated on elevated, hard-to-clean surfaces, such as ducts, beams, and light fixtures. These surfaces were not cleaned often enough to always keep the dust below hazardous levels. In the tunnel beneath the sugar silos, granulated sugar flowed through chutes onto a long steel conveyor belt. From time to time, clumps of sugar would become stuck in one of the chutes blocking the flow of sugar on the belt, spilling sugar onto the floor and releasing dust into the tunnel. But the tunnel was large and ventilated, so this airborne dust did not build up to explosive concentrations. However, in 2007, the company enclosed the conveyor belt with stainless steel panels to protect the sugar from possible contamination. The enclosure was not equipped with a dust collection system. As a consequence, sugar dust would now be trapped inside this enclosure. On February 7, 2008, clumps of sugar were found blocking one of the discharge chutes. Sugar from the adjacent silo likely spilled off the moving belt. Dust likely accumulated to an explosive concentration inside the enclosure. At about 7.15 p.m., the sugar dust contacted a nearby ignition source likely an overheated bearing, and exploded. This primary explosion blew apart the enclosure and vented into the packing building. Accumulated sugar was lofted and ignited by the advancing fireballs. The dust clouds fueled a chain reaction of secondary explosion, which swept through the buildings. Concrete floors buckled, releasing tons of granulated and powdered sugar into the flames. Emergency evacuation drills had not been conducted, 
and the explosions had cut the power to much of the interior lighting. In the maze of darkened and damaged stairwells and passageways, workers desperately tried to flee the growing inferno. The CSB found that correspondence dating back to the late 1950s showed that plant managers in Port Wentworth were aware of the explosive nature of sugar dust and the danger of dust accumulations. As far back as 1961, a memo described a sugar dust explosion that heavily damaged the powdered sugar mill room. Despite the long-standing awareness of the explosive nature of sugar dust, not enough was done to manage the hazard. In 2006, the CSB issued a study of combustible dust, which called on OSHA to establish a comprehensive combustible dust standard based on the current standards of the National Fire Protection Association, or NFPA. In October 2007, OSHA began implementing a new national emphasis program to increase the enforcement of existing regulations related to combustible dust. Imperial Sugar learned of the OSHA Combustible Dust National Emphasis Program four months before the devastating explosion at Port Wentworth. But management did not act effectively to control the serious dust problem in the packing buildings. Less than two months before the disaster, an internal inspection showed that many tons of sugar were still regularly spilling onto the floors. This provided much of the fuel for the massive secondary explosions and fires. The CSB found that over the years, the Port Wentworth facility periodically experienced small fires fueled by spilled sugar and accumulated dust on equipment. But none resulted in a sugar dust explosion that propagated through the plant. Investigators said that decades of operating without a catastrophic explosion may have lulled managers into complacency. In its report, the CSB issued the following recommendations to the Imperial Sugar Company. Apply NFPA standards to the design and operation of the rebuilt Port Wentworth facility. Develop and implement comprehensive combustible dust control, housekeeping, and training programs. Improve emergency evacuation policies and procedures. Companies can go a long way to control combustible dust within their own facilities by following the existing recommendations of the National Fire Protection Association. But it is also time for a comprehensive federal standard on combustible dust. In April 2009, OSHA announced plans to begin rulemaking on a combustible dust standard for general industry. In its final report on the Imperial Sugar Accident, the CSB recommended that OSHA move forward expeditiously with the new standard. Without regulation, enforcement and education, workers will continue to be at risk from catastrophic dust explosions. For further information, please visit csb.gov. <laughs>